Wait a minute. Have you heard the strange tales of the Whistler? I'm the Whistler. You cops are going to be on the scene of a crime instead of coming in after it's all over. Tonight, I'm going to do a little exterminating. Sunday night, and again, CBS presents The Whistler. I, The Whistler, know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. And so I tell you tonight the story of the Double Cross. It is Christmas Eve in the big lonely city of New York. Outside, the snow falls in huge floating flakes. Inside an apartment, young Joe Blake sits on the floor before a small Christmas tree with his four-year-old nephew, Timmy. Joe's sister died two years ago, and for a while the child's father tried to look after Timmy. But being a detective lieutenant, the father, Steve, found it almost impossible. A year ago, young Joe had become involved with some hoodlums and would have gone to reform school but for Steve's intercession. Joe has kept out of trouble since then and has been living with Steve and taking care of the apartment and little Timmy. Santa Claus come, Uncle Joe? Well, I don't think he'll come until you go to sleep, Timmy. How's he gonna get in? He comes down the chimney. What chimney? I never thought of that. Well, maybe it comes through the window. They're all locked, Uncle Joe. Well, I'll open one after you go to bed, kid. He'll get in. Don't worry about that. Open the biggest one. The biggest one? Why? Well, I saw Santa Claus, and he's fat. And a pony is big, too. Oh, I see. Well, I don't know about the pony, Timmy. Kind of scarce these days. Huh? Well, ponies are kind of kind of extinct. Well, I could keep my window open. No one would smell them. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to have a train just as well if you don't get a pony, huh? Mm-hmm. Atta boy, Timmy. Well, you better go to bed now. It's after 11 and old Nick won't come unless he's sure you're asleep. How about it? When is Daddy coming? Oh, he'll be along soon. Come on, Timmy. You're going to turn in. There we are, tucked in fine. Night, Timmy. Don't forget to open the window. I won't. I'll open them all. Police calls on the other end of the dial, Joe. Huh? Oh, hello, Steve. I didn't hear you come in. Let me help you. I wasn't looking for the police call. No. I just put Timmy to bed. Why so late? Oh, he wanted to see Santa Claus. He's going to be kind of disappointed in the morning. How so? <laughs> well, it's a pony. Well, maybe you can buy him one, Joe. Are you kidding? No. I don't get it. What's the matter with you, Steve? Something go wrong tonight? Have you been here all evening? Why, sure. Haven't been out. Don't I always stay with Timmy when you work late? You didn't slip out for an hour or so while Timmy was asleep. Huh? No, why should I? But you could have. Sure I could, but I didn't. Joe, when I got you out of that last scrape, I did it because I had a lot of faith in you, in your promises. I still don't get it. I was the one who got you that relief job in that department store. I I vouched for you. I know that. What about it? Somebody opened the store's safe tonight. Somebody with slick fingers. Sensitive fingers, like... like yours, Joe. What? Why, I've been near the store since noon. You sure? Certainly. I'm not crazy. I've had my lesson. I wish I could believe that. I swear I haven't been out of this house. Why should you try to pin anything like this on me just because I'm... Well, I'm working there during the holiday season. I'm not trying to pin anything on you. Just has all the earmarks of your abilities to open a safe. That's not fair, Steve. I'm through with that kind of stuff. I got plans. I'm going to make something useful of myself. You're sure you weren't out of this place? I swear I wasn't, Steve. I swear it. Okay. I'll take a chance on it. I'm not on the case, but I heard about it. Now, look, they'll start checking on all the records of guys like you, and they'll probably drop around to see you tomorrow. I didn't leave the house, Steve. I didn't. Okay, but you got to have an alibi. Well, Timmy was here. Ah, uh, Timmy's a baby. He won't count. 
Oh, hello, Steve. Why, evening, Captain. Come on in. Yeah. You know my brother-in-law, Joe. Yeah, I remember him. What can I do for you? Sit down. I was just ready to turn in, but sitting around reading for a couple of hours. Kind of drowsy. Yeah? How long you been here, Steve? Oh, I got off duty at 8. Been home since 8.30. Why? How long has Joe been here? Oh, he was here when I came in. He's He's been here all evening. Hasn't been out? Certainly not. What are you getting at, Captain? Joe's been working mornings at Shelby's department store, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, their safe was open tonight around 9.30. They closed at 7.30. I thought we'd check up on the boys with sensitive fingers. Joe? <laughs> Why, he hasn't been out of the house. I'll swear to that. You will? Certainly I will. Ah, Joe's through with that kind of stuff. Yeah? Well, then how would you explain this, Steve? Why, where'd you get that cigarette case? That's... Wait a minute. Let's see that. Sure. We found it beside the safe. Joe, this is the case your sister gave you a year before last. Now, you had your name engraved on it. Yeah, but how did it get there? I've never been near this store safe. No? Well, I suppose you just lost it somewhere. When did you see that case last, Joe? Oh, yeah, I had it this morning. As a matter of fact, I hadn't missed it. Hmm. You expect me to believe that, Steve? No. And you expect me to believe that you were here all evening? No. You dirty little rat. You did pull that job. No, no, I swear I didn't, Steve. I swear it. You know what this means, Steve? You haven't been here all evening. You're lying. You're trying to furnish an alibi for Joe. Do you know what that means? Yes, I know what it means. Sneaking little crook, I believed in him. Get him out of here. Get him out before I break his neck. Steve, please listen. There'll be a hearing about you, Steve, in the morning. But Joe can't explain how his cigarette case happened to be near the safe. He remembers having lunch with a few of the old gang. Maybe it disappeared then, but nothing can be proved. So Joe is convicted and sent to prison for two years. Steve is discharged from the police force and goes into seclusion, his heart filled with bitter hatred for Joe. Two years pass, and Joe is released, determined to make a success of his life regardless of his past. Steve has disappeared, but Joe meets Della Kenton, daughter of wealthy John Kenton. Della persuades her father to engage Joe as his secretary. Guess who, darling? Huh? Why, I can't imagine. But if I could, I'd guess it was Della. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'd guess right. Are you going to type all day, Joseph? No, not all day, darling. I'll be through in a few minutes. I've got a message for you. I knew you were busy, so I answered the phone. It was a man, thank heaven, <laughs> and he said to tell you that he'd located your friend Steve. What? Did you get the address? Yes, darling, but don't get so excited. Here it is. 454 East 17th Street. Hmm. That's certainly a dilapidated part of town. Whom do you know who lives there? A fellow I used to know. I've been trying to locate him for two years. Well, it is a sort of a cheap locality, isn't it? May I go with you? Oh, darling, I'd rather you didn't. I won't be gone long. Well, I hope not. And, and don't forget, Father is arriving on the midnight train and he expects us to meet him. Yeah, I remember. I'll be back soon. All right, darling, I'll be ready. So long, Della. Just a moment. Haven't you forgotten something? Have I? What? Are you a married man? <laughs> Certainly not. That is, not yet. Well, then don't act so much like one. Come back here and kiss me. Oh, I'm sorry, Stella, Adela, darling. I, I was so excited I forgot. Bye, dear. Mm, that's better. Now you can go. Go on. <laughs> I won't be gone, Mom. I hope not, because I want to talk to you about Christmas. Christmas? Yes. We're going to give a Christmas party, and I want you to help me. Oh, yes, of course, darling. I won't be long. <laughs> Timmy, well, well. How are you, baby? Huh? What do you want? Well, Timmy, don't you remember me? It's your Uncle Joe. <laughs> oh, gee, it's good to see you. Uncle Joe? Gee, Uncle Joe. By golly, I've been looking for you and your dad ever since, well, for over a year. Where's your dad? I don't know. Someplace, I guess. Yeah? How long you been in this place? Oh, a long time. What's Steve doing? I don't know. It's almost Christmas again, Timmy. Remember that last Christmas when you wanted a pony? <laughs> what would you like to have most this Christmas? Huh? How'd you like a bicycle or a pair of skates? Or... Hey, hey, what's wrong, Timmy? Why are you crying? I... 
I'd like to have a bicycle, See, but... what are you doing in bed at this time of the afternoon? I couldn't ride a bicycle. Timmy, what is it? Tell me, baby. I don't know, Uncle Joe. I just can't walk. When did this happen? Last summer. First my foot wouldn't work. Then my leg wouldn't work. And... Oh, Timmy. But I'll be all right pretty soon. As soon as Pop gets the money for the operation. Of course you will, Timmy. You'll be all right in no time at all. Well, that must be Steve now. I'll close your door for a minute, Timmy. I want to talk to Steve. You'll come back, Uncle Joe? Yeah, I'll be back a lot now. Hello, Steve. What are you doing here? Who let you in? I walked in. Door was open. Well, it's still open. Get out. I've been looking for you ever since I got out. What for? I wanted to explain things. I'm sorry about what happened to you, Steve. I don't want any explanations. Hey, what's wrong with Timmy? Are you going... You look like you'd been drinking a lot, Steve. So what? You wouldn't be living in a place like this if you were working. I'm getting by all right. What about Timmy's operation? Can you take care of that? I will, I will. Well, maybe I could help, Steve. Why, well, you thieving little rat. I wouldn't take anything from you if Timmy and I both stopped at that. Don't be a fool, Steve. I haven't got anything, but I may be able to raise some money. How? Open another safe? Now get out of here before I throw you out. You're drunk, Steve. I'm not drunk and I don't need you. Get out! Okay, Steve... Okay, I'll go. But if you don't care about Timmy, I do. Now, look, Timmy's got to be operated on within 30 days. It'll take $2,000, maybe more, and I'll get it. I won't steal it the way you would. And I'll get it. Now, get out of here before I brain you. So long, Steve. I'll be seeing you. Dusk has descended as Joe leaves the cheap apartment and drives to the palatial estate of his fiancée, Della. He has decided to ask Della's father to lend him the $2,000. As he turns into the drive, a man steps out from beside the gate and stands before his car. What do you want? I want to talk to you, Joe. Who are you? Freddy Elsa. You remember me, Joe. What do you want, Freddy? Uh, Mike Slavich wants to have a little gab fest with you. Mike Slavich? Where is he? Turn out your lights and turn off your motor. What are you doing here? Mike will tell you. Hiya, Joe. How you doing? What are you doing around here, Mike? I want to talk to you. Mind if I get in? You've been doing all right since you got out, haven't you, Joe? Well enough. I'll say. Living in this big joint, engaged to old man Kenton's daughter. That's what I call climbing. You're the old man's secretary, ain't you? Yeah, get to the point. Old man Kenton's got a safe in that house. It's got a lot of rocks in it. What about it? We thought you might help us get them. You know the combination of the safe. You're crazy. I wouldn't think of it. We could change your mind. Couldn't we, Freddy? Yeah, more ways than one. Get out of this car. You don't scare, eh, Joe? No. Well, we mean business. If that don't scare you, maybe something else will. You think so? We know a quiet little spot where no one would find you for weeks, if ever. Well, a real gun. Shoulder holster and everything. You've come a long way since we were kids, Mike. Started out with cap pistols and now the real thing. Yep. All you do is squeeze it and squirts lead instead of water. How far do you think you'd get if you did squeeze it? We've never been pinched yet. No record, no fingerprints, no nothing. First time for everything, huh? Cigarette, Mike? Yeah. Thanks, Joe. Oh. Get a load of the cigarette case, Freddy. Joseph from Della. Fancy stuff. Well, how about it, Joe? Well, looks like I'm stuck. I think you guys mean business. What's your plan? Old man Kenton's out of town. We walk in with you, you open the safe, take the rocks, and we all leave. All leave? We'll take you with us. We'll hide out for a day soon until they start looking for you. You'll be accused, you know. Now, wait a minute. Come on, get going, Joe. Out of that car and up the drive. Open it up, Joe. Quit stalling. Okay, okay. It's open. Hand me the stuff. There you are. Thanks. Now, let's go. Joseph, are you in the library? Get out there and talk to her. Tell you leaving town for a few days. No monkey business. We'll be watching. Ah, uh, yes, Della. I'll be right out. Oh, where have you been, darling? We've got to meet that train. Well, I... Della, I was... Uh, well, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, you'll have to meet your father alone. I I got to run out of town tonight on business. I'll be back in a few days. What? Well, when did this come up? Uh, just a few minutes ago. I'm going to drive. Well... Well, all right, darling, if you must. Will you be back in time for the Christmas party? Well, I hope so, Della. Well, I, 
I'd better get to the station. The train will be in in a few minutes. Yeah. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, and take care of yourself, Joseph. I'll try, darling. As soon as she gets out the drive, we'll leave. You take my car, Freddy. I'll drive with Joe. Come on. Now, two days later, the story of the jewel theft breaks in the newspapers. Joe Blake is suspected. An old man, Kenton, has offered a reward for the recovery of the stones in apprehension of Joe. Gee, Mike, he's offering $10,000 for the recovery of the rocks and $2,500 for the capture of Joe. I see, I see. Well, we'll lay low for a few more days, then skip to Chicago and unload this stuff. Why do that? You got a better deal right here in town. How do you mean, Joe? You'd make a lot more by collecting this reward than you would from a fence out of town. Hmm? You mean we go back to Kenton and hand over the stuff? Why not? Not a bad idea. But we'd have to take you with us and turn you in. Well, certainly. You'd have to do that to prove how you found the jewels. What's your plan? Oh, look. You guys are a couple of private detectives. And you read about the reward, see? You just happened to spot me and grab me. Brought me back to Kenton. You turn over the stuff and he pays off. I'll make a break for the door. You gotta take a few shots at me to make it look real. But you shoot wild. I get away. Then later on, when the coast is clear, I'll drop around. That leaves you in the clear, and I don't get locked up. Uh, I think it's a nutty idea. What if it don't work? Shut up. That ain't a bad idea, Joe. I'll take you up on that. So, Mr. Kenton... Me and my partner read about the theft and saw this guy's picture and happened to spot him in this lunchroom. So we nabbed him. Well, here he is, and there's all your jewelry. Yes, this is all here, every bit of it. Take it over, Della. See if your jewels are all there. Yes, Father. Nothing of mine is missing. Very well. I suppose you want the reward? Well, uh, <laughs> after all... I'll give you this check for 10000 now for the return of the stones. And I'll withhold the twenty five hundred until he is booked by the police and locked up. Well, okay, but uh, we captured him. What more do you want? I prefer it that way. I want to be sure that he's locked up. And if he gets out in twenty years, it'll be too soon for me. You certainly pulled the wool over my eyes. And when I think that Della might have married you, an ex convict. Can't always judge a book by its cover. It doesn't seem possible I could have been such an utter fool. You've got a lot of things to learn, Della. The sooner you get him out of here, the better. Well, here's your check. Come on, Della. He's getting away. Come back here. Right. He's locked it from the other side. He won't get far. I must have hit him. Call the police. Never mind. We'll get him. 2,500 belongs to us. Come on, Freddy, out this window. He won't get far. Do you think you hit him, really? No, I missed him deliberately. Shot high. Now that I think about it, I'm just a sap. That was our chance to get rid of him. So it legally. He knows too much. I don't trust him. Yeah, but we ain't really cops. So what? Any citizen's got a right to catch a fugitive? Come on, we're going to get that baby. Joe makes a getaway and heads for a little hotel where he hides out for another day. Then the papers break with another story. Kenton has increased the reward for Joe's capture. Joe studies this over for a while and realizes the possibility of Mike's double-crossing him for the additional reward. He slips out for a while, then returns to his room around eight in the evening. Who is it? Open up or I'll kick it down. Steve. Well, so here you are, the rat himself. What do you want, Steve? What do you think? Are you back on the force, Steve? I will be when I get through with you. Because of you, I got kicked out. And now you're the one who's going to set me back in harness again. Funny how things work out. Oh, you know about the reward, do you? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Once a crook, always a crook. I knew you'd pull something sooner or later. How's Timmy? He's just going to be fine in a few days. What do you mean? He can have that operation now. Oh, good, I'm... Glad to hear that. You're not half as glad as I am. And the thing that pleases me most is the way I'm getting the dough. Boy, this rep is going to send you away for 20 years. So what? Get your hat and start walking. And don't try that fade-out stuff on me, because I like you so much, I'd as soon plug you as look at you. I 
Thanks, Mr. Kenton. Thanks very much. I wouldn't have come out so soon, but, well, this money is a lifesaver. Well, how's that, Bradley? My kid, Timmy's got to have an operation I didn't have a cent. Has to be done in a few days or he won't live. Check's a real Christmas present. Mr. Bradley, what do you think they will do with Joseph? No, oh, he'll get 20 years. Two-time loser. What a shame. I had a lot of faith in that boy. So did Della. I just can't understand it. There's been some others who felt that way. Well, what did he have to gain? He was engaged to Della and he could have had everything. And he was very stupid to do what he did. What do you mean? Well, he took a chance on his life when he escaped from this room. He knew those two men had guns. Good thing for him that the big fella couldn't shoot straight. They fired at him? The big man did, as he went right through that door. Look up above the door. All three shots near the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah, I see. You know, I'd say there was either very good shooting or he had a gun that kicked like a mule. It wasn't a big gun. A snub-nosed revolver. Snub-nosed. Not a service pistol? No, I'm sure it wasn't. Hmm. I may drop in on you in a few days, Mr. Kenton. Certainly, Bradley. Any time. I want to ask you a few questions, Joe. Did you collect the reward? I did last night. How's Timmy? He went to the hospital this morning. Oh, that's swell. Gee, I'm glad. Well, what do you want to know? He didn't pull his job alone, Joe. How did you arrive at that conclusion? Who were those guys who captured you? Said they were private detectives. One of them was a swell shot. He placed every slug in the same spot, above the door, deliberately. They were in this with you, gagged to cop the reward that was sure to be offered. Otherwise, they'd have popped you in the doorway, you were to get away, and then all meet later and share the proceeds. Yeah? But in the meantime, they changed their minds, Joe, and decided to cut you out. They double-crossed you. What do you mean? How do you suppose I knew where you were hiding? A guy phoned me and tipped me off. They figured you'd... they had no police record. Nothing you could say would implicate him. They're safe. Why attempt to shield a double-crosser? That's just what I figured those rats would do. You might as well spill it, Joe, and determine to crack this case. Yeah? What would happen if you cracked this one and another one besides? Set you up as a lieutenant again, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. I was forced to open that safe at the point of a gun. <laughs> Tell me another one, Joe. If you want to grab the other two guys, I'll make a deal with you. A deal? Let me talk to your fingerprint expert and get me out of this cell. Are you kidding? I want you to take me to old man Kenton's. There's a Christmas Eve party going on there tonight. I wouldn't trust you across the hall. It means just as much to you as it does to me and probably more. I'll guarantee results. Okay. What's your plan? I'll tell you on the way out to the Kenton place. All right. Hey, Sergeant, let us out of here. Come with me, gentlemen. Father's waiting for you in the library. Looks like you're going to have quite a party here tonight, Miss Kenton. It sure does. Here are the two detectives, Father. Oh, yes, yes. Come in, gentlemen. Come in. Uh, close the door, Della. I sent for you men because you did a good job of capturing Joe Blake and returning the jewels. Yeah? I'm having quite a number of guests here tonight, and I've just received some disturbing news. Joe Blake has escaped. Escaped? Holy mackerel. He may make another try to steal the jewels while we are occupied with our guests. Oh, I see, uh... You want us to see that nothing happened. I want you fellas to stay here near the safe, and if he does come, grab him. Uh, sure, sure. You won't have a thing to worry about. Good. Come along, Della. Our guests are beginning to arrive. All right, everybody, don't make a move. Father! Sure. Lay your guns on the desk, boys. Thanks. Get over to the other side of the room, Della. You too, Kenton. Things might happen. What's on your mind, Joe? Spread your hands flat on that desktop, Mike. You too, Freddy, and keep them there. Make one move, and I'll drill you both, you dir dirty double-crossing rats forced me to open the safe at the point of a gun and tipped off the cops sort of find me because you were afraid I might horn in on the reward. This guy must be nuts, Mr. Kenton. Which one of you phoned Steve Bradley? Come on. Well, I didn't, Joe. I thought you was going to contact Shut us. Shut up, you little dope. Yeah, but he's mad, Mike. I don't want him to think I tipped the cops. Shut up. You did it, Freddy. You're the one. No, no, honest, Joe. I didn't. I, I didn't. Please, Joe. Open I... that safe, Kenton. I'm really taking those jewels this time. But I won't be bothered by Mike and Freddy. Hey, Joe, I didn't do it, honest. I'm going to place one right between your eyes, Freddy. Right between your eyes. Joe! He's bluffing. Don't anybody move. I'll open the door. Hello, Mr. Kenton. Hello, Bradley. We traced Joe Blake to the edge of your estate. I thought we'd be able to in for... Just in time, Steve. Put up your hands and step into the room. What goes on here? The cops are going to be in on the scene of the crime instead of coming in after the crime's over. I'm going to take some jewels and do a little exterminating. But first, I'm going to make these guys do a little talking. I want to know which one of you guys tipped off Steve about me. 
Say something, Mike. This guy's crazy. Says we made him steal the stuff. That the voice you heard on the phone, Steve? No. What have you got to say, Freddy? It wasn't me. I tell you, it wasn't. It must be him. Yeah, it certainly sounds like him. I thought so. Right between the eyes, Freddy. Oh, please, Joe, don't. He won't shoot. Hand over that gun, Joe. Give it to me. Oh! oh. He did it. I told you he meant it. You're crazy, Joe. You're crazy. I killed a cop, so why should I worry about killing a couple of rats like you? Start talking, Mike. Tell him you guys forced me to open that safe. You can't bluff me. There's no proof of such a thing. No? All right, Sergeant. Check Mike's fingerprints on the glass top desk. Step on it. Yeah, sure. Mr. Kenton, look in the second drawer of the safe. You'll find my cigarette case wrapped in a handkerchief. What? By George, he's right. I put it there the night I opened the safe. Let the sergeant compare the prints with the ones on the desktop. I haven't been near that safe since the night the stones disappeared. What are you trying to pull, Joe? You have no police record, Mike. I didn't want you to go through life like that, so I fixed one up for you. Remember the night you forced me into this? I offered you a cigarette? Well, you got a record now, Mike. Well, Mike's prints on the desk. Check with the ones in the cigarette case. And how about that photo of prints you found on that safe I was supposed to have opened several years ago? You brought them along? Sir. Why, they're all the same. They all check. Now you guys start talking. Go on, tell it all. I'll tell nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. Right between the eyes, Freddy. Right between the eyes. Tell him, Mike. Tell him he means it. I'll tell him nothing. (laughs) Joe! Well, that finishes Freddy. Are you ready to talk, Mike? Yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll talk, Joe. I'll talk. You robbed that department store. You planted my cigarette case there. You copped it at the lunchroom, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I had nothing to do with that job. And you did force me to open this safe, didn't you? My cigarette case proves that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'll admit it. You're innocent, Joe. All right. There you are, Steve. You can get up now. Yeah. Very nicely handled, Joe. Hey, I... I thought you was... I've been framed! Pour some water on Freddy. Joe was using blanks. Hey, Joe. No, Joe, I'll tell everything. Everything? Nothing more to tell, Freddy. It's all been told. Well, that certainly leaves you in the clear, Joe. And, Joe, I want to apologize for everything. Okay, Lieutenant. Apologies accepted. Merry Christmas, Joe. Same to you, Steve. And tell Timmy that uh, Della and I will be down to see him in the morning. Well, there you are. Everything worked out very nicely, just as everything should, but seldom does. <laughs> but there's something I should explain about the person who tipped Steve off as to where to find Joe. It wasn't Mike, and it wasn't Freddy. No, it was Joe himself. It was Joe who phoned Steve knowing it would give Steve an impetus, a new start in his career of sleuthing. And it really worked. And it saved Timmy's life. And Joe's, too, for that matter. CBS has presented The Whistler. Original music for this production was composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. The Whistler is written and directed by J. Donald Wilson and originates from Columbia Square in Hollywood. Next week at 9.30... I, The Whistler we return to tell you another unusual tale. Good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.